Okay. Okay, welcome back everyone to our second lecture on uh, BC314 and media and technology. And uh, I've uh, just been sharing uh, some of the software platforms that we use at uh, APC uh, for our church work. Uh, I'm just sharing it with you. I'm not saying everybody has to use it or everybody has to do the same thing, but uh, just sharing some of the things that we find useful and uh, that help us uh, in the ministry work. So we'll just pick up from where we pause. Let me share the PDF and then also share some Uh, I was just talking about a church app. So um, our, we are actually rebuilding our church app. So um, um, uh, we, uh, we uh, uh, it's useful. I mean, uh, again, uh, uh, what, what we are planning to do, uh, uh, the roadmap for this product is that we are going to be uh, having our congregation uh, really relate, I mean, use the church app for, you know, registering for events, um, accessing all, a lot of our content, uh, and, and doing a lot of things through the church app itself. So that's kind of the direction we're going, and so we are building it ourselves. Now, uh, for our e-learning, we are using an open source product, uh, which is called Open edX. So, and some of you are already familiar with this. Now, yeah, you know, uh, be, before, before the pandemic, uh, we had explored uh, some of these e-learning portals. So we, we were thinking, you know, okay, Bible College is there. Uh, why don't we kind of also set up an e-learning platform? Um, uh, and we had looked at a, a open source product called Moodle. And then we also looked at Open edX. And you know we 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 were test we were just playing around with it testing it. This was before the pandemic, um, and uh, then uh, and and the, the idea was why don't we you know record our Bible college lectures, put it there so that people could use it. That was the motivation. And then uh, the pandemic happened, so we were forced to close down physical Bible college. We went on online with uh, Google Classroom, like what we're doing right now. And uh, that's when we said, hey, why don't we also extend this on an e-learning platform? And so for us, it was already easy because prior to the pandemic, we were already you know, playing around with Moodle and Open edX, and our preference was Open edX, and we were just setting up some, I say, test classes and doing all that. So immediately we said, okay, we're going to go with Open edX. Let's set it up. Let's get our e-learning platform up. So um, in 2020, sorry, was it 2020? 2021, I think, yes, 2021, we set up our e-learning platform. It uses a free product called Open edX, and it's actually very easy to use, very easy to set up the classes and the coursework. So we trained all our Bible college faculty saying, okay, this is how you have to use it. So uh, all of them uh, know how to use it. And there were other people. We, uh, initially, we had assistants. Uh, we had some people who would help our Bible college faculty to do all the setting up of the classes. And uh, eventually, all of them learned how to do it. So it's, it's a very easy to learn platform. And it's free. So here again, you can download this product and uh, set it up and, and use it. And, and you know may, many of you are aware about um, uh, our product, the e-learning platform, right? Uh, you, you can see our e-learning platform. Uh, I just switched to the screen, so yeah. Uh, can you see the e-learning platform? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, so many of you are familiar with this. So this, uh, uh, you know, uh, we, we actually don't charge for this. We keep everything free. And if people want to contribute, they can. Uh, and so we have, you know, uh, students from 105 countries accessing this resource, uh, our resources. And it's, uh, it's you know, we all, basically all these lectures come up here as well. 
and we can always improve on it. We are planning to actually, for the future, you know, record different short, short courses, put it out here, people can come and learn on their own, whenever they want, so on. So this actually uh, really helped us um, extend everything we're doing out to more people. Um, uh, we have uh, for website analytics, that means to know what's happening on our websites. Again, they're using a free product called Matmo. Um, so this basically it tracks what's happening on all our websites. So we know what is the traffic, who are the people coming to the website. Uh, I mean, uh, from which part of the world are they coming to the website? Um, how many visitors we've had, uh, and so on. So we use this in addition, of course, to Google Analytics. So we have both of these uh, products connecting to our websites and giving us information on our websites. Um, for, uh, for our mail server, that means uh, this is where we set up our email IDs. Um, again, this is a, a free open source product. We use Postfix. Um, the reason we set up our own mail server is because uh, you know we don't have to pay. Um, uh, so if 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 you use a hosting service provider, they will charge for every mailbox you create. You know, so every mail ID they will charge, like you know I don't know what it is, but you know let's say five dollars a month or something. But that's a lot of money if you if you have you know uh, 50, 60, or 100 email IDs. That's a lot of money to pay. Um, so we set up our own mail server. Uh, uh, again, it's using a free product, Postfix. And here we just keep creating all our email IDs. So when you add new stuff, we give them an email ID. Uh, it doesn't cost us other than hosting our mail server, which is a fixed you know cost running on a server. Uh, we can create all different email IDs and so on manage it ourselves and um, php list is again another open source product that manages email ids of people uh, so i think we may have 30 or forty thousand email ids in that in on php list uh, and so these are people from all over the world and uh, who have subscribed or who have contacted us in some way and they get added to these various lists. And uh, so when we want to send an email, email out, a communication out, we send it through PHP list. So it's like our, uh, it manages the email IDs and it also manages our outgoing email communications to broadcast to these various lists. So if you want to do that, you can use this free product called PHP list. And, uh, 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 you know, so that helps you. Another product uh, we use uh, for inventory and asset management is, again, an open source product called Snipe IT. Now, I'm not logging in there because uh, it has all the license numbers and all the details of products. Um, but uh, so whenever we buy a product, whether hardware or software, we first, as a part of our procedure, we tell our people to enter it into our asset management. Uh, so especially expensive things. I'm not talking about small, small things, but you know, if you buy a, a new mixer or speakers or microphones or computers or uh, software licenses for a pro software license product, everything gets entered into our asset ma management system first before it is given out to people to use. And we also re record who it's given out to. So we buy a laptop, a new person joins, we buy a laptop, okay, this laptop, it's entered here, it's given to this person. So we know who has what device. So there are so many staff working and so many things, uh, so many locations and all that. And if a product uh, you know, is broken and something and it's 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 no longer used. We update it here. So we know that this product is gone. It's no longer. But this helps us manage all our assets, software and hardware assets, and uh, keeps a record of their condition. You know, maybe they've gone for repair or they are in good condition. So that's how we track all our inventory. 
and all our license numbers and everything is kept here so we know okay what, what license are we using for which product uh, etc uh, so that's this again it's an open source product uh, anyone can use it uh, that's what we use right our book stack app is what I showed you it's our repository where we keep all our documents for different areas of ministry so that people can go and access it based on that area of ministry they can go and access it uh, these two products we don't um, the church metrics uh, I just put it here uh, is if you want to track your attendance and so on. We, we right now, we track our attendance in simple spreadsheets, uh, but you can use, the, you can set your church up on churchmetrics.com and put data in there. Uh, they will do a analytics for you and tell you, you know, this is how your church is doing and so on. We used to use it for a little time, for a few years, um, then we stopped using it, but I just shared that information here. Right now, we just track on Google spreadsheets and so we know, you know, what our average, uh, what our attendance is week by week. Uh, so we, we have real numbers. So we, we can say, you know, APC Central, 8 o'clock service, so many, this is the average attendance, 1030, et cetera. So we have that. Uh, for every year, you know, all the years that we've been tracking it. Um, There's again a free open source enterprise resource planning software. If if you want to use one software to manage your whole enterprise, you can do that. But of course, they have a lot of restrictions and limitations. But um, I, I just put this in here in case you are uh, you might be interested in looking at it. So um, this just gives you an overview of different. Uh, software products or uh, platforms that you can use uh, for church uh, and so on and uh, what I just want to mention is that um, uh, uh, what I rather, I rather want to say is I want to encourage you uh, you know in your church in your ministry uh, to try and leverage these software products or platforms to whatever extent you can uh, it's going to make uh, managing data and uh, you know uh, doing the ministry work now that much more efficient and also it helps you reach out to more people so that's our motivation right how can we reach more people uh, and so these software tools and platforms helps us do that uh, and so although it it's an investment of time and energy into you know people are there needed to set up these platforms the benefit is you can serve a lot more people so keep this in mind uh, as you think about the software platforms and uh, yeah uh, th these are these are useful okay any questions on software platforms so far Anybody has any questions, any thoughts? So um, generally, do you feel um, do you feel that the church should take or make use of uh, technology? In this sense, or do you think it disconnects us from people and make uh, make us uh, less connected to people? You know, leveraging software platforms to do mid to do ministry. Do you think churches should do it, or do you think it's a, actually a hindrance to ministry? I think that just should do it because it helps in doing it in a very organized way and also makes it be easy for us to manage um, rather than doing it in a hard copy way it's always uh, good to use a software driven makes the work easy and helps us to be more organized mm -hmm. thank you thank you john anyone else i think if the church can keep the cons of technology into check, 
we must use it because this is the way forward. Otherwise, we will be left backward. Thank you. Mm. Mm. That's true. That's true. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. All right. So next week, uh, I want to just deal with. Uh, I think we'll finish next week. Uh, okay. Um, sorry, there's a question on the chat. Uh, I see Subhash's comment. Yes, Judge should do it. Thank you, Subhash, for sharing your thought. Rosalind's question. I have a question. Should all these softwares be used by growing churches, even a small gathering? Also, can make use of this. Yeah, actually, um, I would recommend. Uh, I mean, you don't have to use everything that I put down in that list. You know, you you pick and pick. Uh, you choose whatever is relevant. Um, but I would say even small congregations can start using these. You know, especially if you have people in the church who know. You know, they they, they are IT people. And they, for them, it's a way to serve the church. And it's an opportunity for them. So say, hey, come, you're good in IT. Please come help us set up one or two of these things. Um, you know, uh, so even small congregations can start. And I would say, you know, one of the most, uh, one of the most important things, or, or, or like the, the important things would be one is to manage the data of people, which is, you know, their name, the phone number, the email ID, their house address, that information you, know, is, you need to maintain. Because if somebody you want to call somebody, you don't have the number, how to call them, how to reach out. You know, So having a church management system is good. Similarly, to want to send email, suppose you want to send an email you know, to 200 people, 100, 100, 200 people or more. If you have an email uh, you know, list, it's easy to send. Otherwise, physically sitting, trying to send email to 200 people is very difficult. So even a small congregation can start using it. And, uh, and, and, and these soft platforms can handle large volumes of data. So even if the church grows to many thousands of people, it will be good. You can handle it. Yeah. Um, and, and nowadays, you know, a lot of young people are actually good in technology. So if you get them involved, uh, it's a way for them to serve in the church. Okay, so next week, uh, I think will be our last session. I want to talk about two things. One is uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, and I'm not going into great detail, but just to talk about the pros and cons, you know, uh, how, how it is affecting uh, church administration and ministry and so on. You know, I, I heard, I, I, I don't know personally, but I heard one pastor, he preached a message, then he asked his congregation, you know, who wrote the sermon? They all said, we thought you wrote it. Then he said, no, 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 I, <laughs> I got chat GPT to write this sermon, and I just came and preached it. So that is that is one extreme where this, this whole artificial intelligence is going. But then there is also some good things that can happen. Uh, I just want to talk about it and think about uh, the pros and cons, you know. Uh, how can we use it in a positive way? And uh, how we sh what we should avoid, you know. I don't think I will ever preach a sermon <laughs> written by Chad GPT. <laughs> I, I don't think I'll ever do that, but uh, some people are doing it. What, you know, uh, yeah, what to say about that. But um, anyway, just we'll discuss. We'll discuss next week um, the pros and cons, you know, of artificial intelligence. We talk a little bit about that, and then uh, the last section is about uh, data privacy. So, uh, you know, because as a church, 
you actually have the data of so many people. Other people are interested in that data, and that has happened. You know, uh, some some businessman will come has has come, says um, he has a business, he wants to promote it. So I don't know what is you know whether he, it was innocently asking or whether the motivation was wrong. I don't know, but he came and said, "Can you can the church send an email to all these people about what he?" his business has to offer. Now he's a member of your congregation. What will you do? You know, well, what will you do? Uh, he's a member of your congregation. He's not asking for a bad thing. He's asking, saying, hey, can you send information about the service he's offering? Uh, you know, it could be a general service, uh, something, whatever. To all the people you have a data you have the database you have so many people can you do it so that's where then you need to know what to do right and for us we have a very strict policy we don't do that right because uh, people have given us their data as a church for the church to use to serve them so the church if we have an announcement to make we have some information to share from the church about ministry okay we will share but we cannot allow somebody else to use this data uh, for some other other reasons like business so on so so those are things we, we would we need to be careful about when we are using software you know because people have entrusted their data to you uh, like I said you know we probably have about 3,000 just here in Bangalore their birthdays their anniversaries their address their mobile number uh, uh, email ID all that data we have it they have entrusted it to the church uh, family members children all the data is with us we have to be careful hmm? we'll talk about that so these are two things we'll cover next week uh, artificial intelligence and data protection and uh, with that we would have covered this course then I'll just give one assignment for us to review everything okay all right, so let's close in prayer. Um, somebody could lead us in prayer, and then we will dismiss. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity once again to learn. Uh, and as a searcher, God, we pray that we would make use of uh, the technology that you have provided and help us to use to glorify your name, your kingdom be established in uh, various parts of the world, wherever we are ministering to, and let uh, us use it wisely, O oh God, and we would be good stewards of the good grace that you have given us. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, everyone. I have enjoyed the rest of the day. Uh, we will connect again tomorrow. Thank you.